Hey guys, what is up? And today we are going to be playing it. Well, not we're not. What? Okay, we're going to be making a tower defense game on Scratch. So yeah, let's get right into it. First of all, let's delete Scratch the cat. And then uh, we want to paint a new backdrop. And uh, we can call this level one. All right. And now all you just have to do is like paint a level. So I'm going to have like a green background here like that. And no outline. Just make a giant square. Boom. And then I'm going to make like a sandy color. Like something that looks like some sand. Okay, I think that. And then set your brush size to like 100 and just start drawing um, some kind of a level. So it should start on one end and end on the other. Wait, I think this could go up. Actually, wait. Instead of doing that, there is another way. Wait, oh my god, my mouse isn't even working properly today. All right, so there is another way. And you just have to draw a ton of squares. I mean, that method also works. Like, see, boom. And then you can just put it right there. And, um, yeah, wait. Okay, so we should make this a little wider. Boom. Uh, and yeah, so basically we have to design a level. And, oh, no, I do not. I don't want to print the thing. Um, yeah. All right, so, um, what, another thing you need to make sure is that, um, so when you're drawing squares, if you're drawing squares, um, you can see that the edges are all pointy. So what you can do is, um, just don't make them, try not to make them pointy. So what you can do is you can draw a, a circle and, okay, wait, no, not a circle. What you can do is you can click on the point tool and then zoom in on the edge up here and then click on the shape and then make like two of those, you know? Oh my God. Okay, yeah. So make two points right next to each other like that and then click curved and then click delete and then I'll curve the edge. And just do that for every single edge that's like just sticking out. Curved, delete. Oh yeah, and yeah. All right, so guys, um, I'm done making my track or whatever you want to call it. Um, ouch. Wait. Now that I think about it, enemies won't have enough space. I mean, you will. Uh, players won't have enough space to make, um, to place their towers. All right, well, now we gotta restart. All right, so guys, I think this track looks good. Um, and so now you wanna just paint a new sprite and call this enemy. And just make it a circle for now. Really doesn't matter, I'm gonna make it red. Um, so let's give it an outline of 12. And uh, actually, let's change the outline. Wait, uh, yep, yeah, let's change it to like five. No, no, it does not look good. 12, yes, 12 better. Okay, and let's just make it a little smaller. Okay. And I'm also gonna draw a uh, no outline and no um, color fill. And I'm going to just draw a square around the 
um, shape. Uh, it, it helps, like, not look weird. And then after that, you just want to duplicate this. First of all, call this, um, center. Then call this one top. So go over here and just make, um, like a sensor almost. We're going to call it, this is going to be a sensor. And just make, wait, put this on the, um, right side or well, left call this left not top um left boom all right so yeah just put that right there and now just duplicate that flip it and call it right also you can delete the um circle on those so now you have the center and left and right and yeah all right so now what you're supposed to do um so i did make a mistake this is supposed to be on top and bottom not left and right and i called them top and bottom also what you will see is i made them a little bit forward like in, in a little bit in front instead of just like right in the center and um that's actually really crucial if you want your uh enemy to move around your track so now in your code, you can see I already have some code here, but let me zoom in. And so first of all, you need a when green flag is clicked and then a go to like wherever you want it to go, go to like the start of your track set size to 100 and point in direction 90. And now in the forever loop, switch costume to top, which is top and move two steps. If touching the background color, which is the color behind your track, then you turn right five degrees. And if the costume is bottom, and oh wait, no, and then switch costume to bottom. And then if touching the color green, you move left five degrees. And then just switch costume to dot at center. And when you have that code, it's not actually that hard. I explained all this in my Pathfinder video. And when you have all this, your enemy will move around the track. I mean, granted, it's not perfect, but um, it does look realistic. Like, you know, the enemies won't move straight. They, they, they will also weaver a little bit. So, yeah. And now we just have to replace all of this. Instead of doing that, we can do when green flag clicked forever. Wait, pick random one through i don't know oh uh, wait no let's do 0 0.1 to two seconds and then create clone myself oh wait actually no we're gonna make this in a wave system so we're gonna create we're gonna get rid of all that create a variable called wave delete the my variable and then set wave to one and then if wave and then wait add equal to if wave is equal to one then wait one then repeat ten times hold on repeat five times um wait one second no wait let's wait like 0 0.2 seconds and create clone myself so it'll spawn five enemies and now we just put all this in a when i start as a clone and then we can also add an if um actually let's make a let's make a um so in your track go to the very end and then just make a a tiny red line um Boom. Yep. And then just make that right there. And then you can do if touching color and then that color. Then uh, um delete this clone. Boom. And you can see, wait. 
Right, we forgot to do when green flag went to hide and when I search up on show. So now you can see, like, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, so. It's. Okay, yeah, and then after that, we need to set a wave to two. Boom. And then after five. Well, no, it's only three. Um. Wave is equal to one. Repeat five times. I just, if I just do that, it it only spawns three of them. What if I set this to eight? Wait, six. Three, four, three. Why is it always three? Um, ten. I don't know. Now it spawns five. So it spawns like half or something. Three, four, five. Um, weird. Um, how about I also uh, duplicate this and then have that if wave is equal to one. Um, then, so then wait like two seconds and set wave to in progress. Oh wait, no, we can just do this. If wave is equal to one, then set wave to in progress. But why does it? It's supposed to create 10 clones. But if I just do that, the all, the all start is one. 0 0.01. Wait, wait. What? What? Is happening. Wait two seconds and set wave to in progress. Does that work? All right. So I'm not either. It's not. I'm not giving them enough time to. Wait. What if I? All right, so I am very, very confused. It's not spawning the right number of enemies. It's only spawning three. Wait, set wave to one? If wave is equal to one, then set enemy. Okay, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not using the enemy I'm thinking. And repeat five times, create clone of myself, and then what if it's? What if I do this? This is going to be very inefficient. Create clone of myself, create clone of myself, create clone of myself. I think that worked. It. W So if we can't do this, then we'll scrap the wave system because there's a very big glitch in Scratch. And, and wait, and instead of making the wave system, how about we make it randomly um, pick a, a time and it'll spawn an enemy. So it's like a rush, like you have to rush and it, it, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Um, 
All right, so guys, just basically just follow this code, make a variable called temp, and you know, just have that and it'll work. So yeah, basically that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, bye.